Hey there, Steve Rubis with another installment of Capital Markets Investor Relations in two minutes or less. Today we're going to talk about how to fire an analyst part two. The easiest way to fire an analyst or enact change is if the analyst messes up his or herself in two ways, bad corporate access or ambush investor meetings. If your company is not experiencing this, there is an alternative method to drive research change. And there's four variables that are going to determine whether you can enact this alternative method. Does your company have significant market cap? Does the management company or industry have prominence to the given investment bank? Does your company have a lot of investment banking deal flow? And lastly, does your company use treasury and credit services at that bank? The more of these variables your company exhibits, the more prominent a customer your company is of that given investment bank and gives you two levers. First, it allows you to go direct to the director of research or head of investment banking. And second, it allows you to make a complaint and be taken seriously. There's two great examples of this in real life. The first is the company Cerner from Digital Healthcare, where any sell side analyst that put a sell rating on the company was ultimately run over by a Mack truck, despite being right, including myself. And the background was that the company had beaten Ray's 60 straight quarters in a row. Investors weren't ready to hear about the financial disruption that was coming, and they were a tent pole stock in the industry driving valuations for future deals. So it was a difficult situation to have overly negative research. The second example are data center REITs. In the early 20 teens, data center REITs were in a secular bear market due to oversupply of rentable space. The cloud had not yet developed, and so investors were negatively inclined on rent growth. Once the cloud started to develop in the mid 20 teens, that secular bull market started to develop. However, REIT investors remained negatively inclined. And so we had a backdrop of a prominent company with a lot of banking relationships deal flow with a prominent bank and a prominent analyst that was overly negative on a secular bull market. This resulted in change of co-coverage where you had a tech-focused analyst and a REIT-focused analyst start to cover data center REITs. What this did is it positively changed REIT investors' view of the industry and allowed those investors to start to buy into and believe in the secular bull market of data growth, which continues today. So with that, thanks for watching. Always here to help you with your capital markets, investor relations, and corporate finance needs.